far away, Robert, in case I can't get to something. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. My second piece, and my two short pieces, is um, <coughs> by um, an 18th century composer, um, Philip Hayes, and it's a uh, pastorale from his uh, uh, organ concerto. Um, my first piece, I don't put a damper on the meeting at all, but I'd like to read an account of perhaps one of the most poignant disasters that has happened in Wales. It was 9.15 a.m. on Friday, October the 21st, 1966. A waste tip slid down the mountain into the mining village of Abbevan, near Lothertonville in South Wales. It first destroyed the farm cottage in its path, killing all the occupants. At Hunt Class Junior School, just below, the children had just returned to their classes after seeing all things bright and beautiful at their assembly. It was sunny on that mountain, but foggy in the village, with visibility about 50 yards. The tipping gang up the mountain had seen the slide start, but couldn't raise the alarm because the telephone cable had been repeatedly stolen. The tribunal inquiry later uh, of the disaster, it said that it happened so quickly the telephone warning would have been, would not have saved lives. Down in the village, nobody saw anything, but everybody heard the noise. Gaynor Lynette, an eight-year-old at the school, remembered four years later. She said it was a tremendous rumbling sound, and all the school went dead. You could hear a pin drop. Everyone just froze in their seats. I just managed to get up, and I reached the end of my desk, when the sound got louder and nearer, until I could see the black out of the window. I can't remember anymore, but I woke up to find that a horrible nightmare had just begun in front of my eyes. The slide engulfed the school in about 20 houses in the village before coming into us. Then there was total silence. George Williams, who was trapped in the wreckage, remembered that in that silence you couldn't hear a bird or a child. 144 people died in the Ababan disaster. 116 of them were school children, about half the children at Pangrass Junior School and five of the teachers were killed. It was so horrifying a disaster that people came in their hundreds to try and help to shuffle away the uh, silt. But of course, there were too many and uh, it became unfutile and the police had to push them aside and go back and let, let, us, let the professionals deal with this. Well, you might say, why have I spoken about this terrible disaster? Well, it's because a year later, in the National Standard, a piece of music and words, um, the words were written by John Roberts, and the music was written by J. Hayden Phillips. And they wrote this hymn and the words in memory of the poignancy of the disaster of Abhavan. And of course that hymn is Blue Arbor. What I'd like to do if I can, I'd like to, to play it which I feel maybe the composer wanted it played. Uh, we in in Wales, and I think most people who sing hymns, we like to stand up and really belt them out, don't we? And we certainly do that with Roaba. But listen, the first part of it sounds quite cheerful. Indeed, it might sound like children singing all things bright and beautiful. And as it goes along, so the disaster unfolds itself. And I, I fear they wanted to show that the strength of God came to help those people. And although it finalizes towards the end as a triumph, the last few words remind us of the disaster and the trading of Magna Key. So um, that's what I hope to do. I probably fail absolutely miserably.